Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Waggett's math class. Today we will build on what we learned about a scatter plot. We can analyze a scatter plot to decide whether there is a relationship between the two quantities on the graph. Let's review what we already learned before. Here are the three examples we talked about. To describe that relationship, we need to talk about three things. First of all is the strength, whether it's a weak or strong relationship. The second thing we talk about is direction, whether it's positive or negative relationship. And the third thing we talk about is whether the relationship is linear or nonlinear. So let's discuss the first example. I can see a trend from left to right where all these dots going up like ants going uphill. So there is a relationship. It's strong because all these dots are close to each other. It's positive because it's going up from left to right. And it's linear because it made a thick line. The relationship would be as the x increase, the y value will increase too. So they both have the same relationship. They both increase or they both decrease. Now the second one. Watch how from left to right there is a pattern, it's going down, which means it is strong, negative, and linear because the line goes down and the dots close to each other. As the x value increases, the y value will decrease. So there's an opposite relationship. One value increases, the other one will decrease. And in this case, watch there is a relationship, there is a pattern, but this time it curves and they are close to each other. So there is a relationship. It's strong, positive, but it's nonlinear. And the last example we talked about, you don't see a pattern. There is no correlation or association between the X and the Y. I can't conclude anything. Therefore, there's no relationship. Now, if the scatter plot shows a linear relationship, how can you draw a line that best fit the data in the scatter plot? Watch the two clues. Draw a line, that means it's linear. Best fit, that means best representation to all the dots on the graph. So let's talk about this first example. Can I draw that green line on top of the data? Or what if I have a red line going through the middle of the data? And the third time, what if I draw the green line on the bottom of the data? Which line best represents all the dots? What do you think? Let's see if this line best represents all the dots. Does the green line represent all the data on the scatter plot? It only represents the upper dots. So that's not a good representation. Same as this one. This green line only represents the bottom dots, so that's not a good representation. How about the red line that's in the middle of all the data? Some of them on the dot, some of them under, some of them above the line. This is called the line of fit because it best represents the data because it's right in the middle of all the dots on the scatter plot. There is a way to measure how good that line is to represent the data, or how strong the relationship between the data on the scatter plot. And it's called the correlation coefficient. If you have a graphing calculator, it will give you that right away. It's a long process, but I just want to explain what it means. The range is from negative one to positive one, and they refer to it as an R. R is the correlation coefficient. Now, if the graphing calculator gave you R close to negative one, that means you have a strong correlation or a strong negative linear correlation. But if it's closer to the zero, that means there is no correlation. That means there's no relationship. And if the R is close to the positive one, that means you have a strong positive correlation or association. Watch how I use the word correlation or association. Those two you will hear or you will read a lot about them. They mean the same. Is there a strong or weak relationship between the data on a scatter plot? And I will give you different examples now. Now, here are four different examples of a scatter plot. 
match the correlation factor with the graph. Let's talk about all these data. We have odd equals 0 0.95, you have odd equals 0 0.75, odd equals 0, and odd equal negative 0 0.95. Let's talk about this first example far and draw the line of best fit. If I draw the line of best fit, watch how that line is so close to all the dots on the graph. So it's strong because all the dots are close to each other, positive because it's going up, and it's linear relationship. So what do you think the correlation coefficient would be? Since it's positive and they all close to each other, then the R equal 0 0.95, it's really close to the positive one. So that's a strong positive linear. Now let's talk about this second one here. If I draw a line going through the dots right in the middle, watch how the dots a little bit farther away from that line and some is on the line. So I would assume that's a moderate positive linear relationship and the correlation coefficient would be the 0.75 because it's not as strong. Now, what about this bottom one? Watch how all the dots are scattered everywhere. That means I can't draw a line of best fit. No line will best describe all these dots. So no relationship, which means the coefficient or the correlation coefficient would equal to zero, which means no relationship, no correlation. And here's the last one, which is the line. If I want to draw a line, it would be going down from left to right. Watch how most of the uh, dots on the line. So it's a strong negative linear relationship. The correlation has to be negative. So n is strong, so r equal negative 0 0.95. We can write an equation for that line of best fit. And I will review how to write the equation in slope-intercept form. Linear equations written in slope-intercept form is y equal mx plus b, where m is the slope, o is the number attached to the variable x, and b is the y-intercept, which is the number that stands alone. How do you find the slope from a graph? You use the rise over run, or the change in y divided by the change of x, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. To you interpret the slope in words, you use the word per, every, or each because it represents a rate of change. The y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis, and it's always the initial value. So to interpret the y-intercept, you use the words initial, starting, or beginning. Here's an example. The table shows the number of people attended a high school baseball game over the last eight years. Here's the table, make a scatter plot and draw a line of fit. So first of all, you need the graph where X represent the number of years and Y represent the number of attendance. The coordinate pairs you take in from the table where X is one, Y is 415, X is two, Y is 495, so forth and plot them on the graph. Now draw the line of fit. I will draw the line of fit like that. And I know it's close to all the data, some of them on the line, some of them above the line, and some of them under the line. That's how I know it's the best representation. It's an estimate, so no one is gonna be perfect finding that line, but I think this is a good representation. Write a linear equation. To write a linear equation, it's in slope and intercept form, y equal mx plus b. First of all, find the slope. To find the slope, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That means I need to choose two dots on the line, right on the vertex, and use them to substitute to find the slope. I don't see any dot right on the line and the vertex. So I would place my own dots right on the vertex and on the line, like this black dot and this black dot. The coordinate for the first one is 3, 800, and the coordinate for the second one is 0, 0, which is the origin. Now I will name this coordinate x1, y1, and this coordinate x2, y2. Substitute the numbers in the equation. y2 is 800 minus y1 is 0, 
and x2 is 3 minus x1, which is 0. Simplify that, you get 800 divided by 3, which is 266.7. You can't have 0.7 people attending, you know, the game. So we round it onto the nearest ones place and use 267 people. But since we're estimated, I would like to round it to the nearest 10 place, which makes it easier to calculate. The slope would be about 270 people. Now, B is the y-intercept where the line crosses the y-axis. Look at the red line. Where did it cross the y-axis? Right on 0, 0, which is the origin. So B equals 0. Now, substitute the value of the slope and the y-intercept in the equation. The slope is 270 and the y-intercept is 0. Any number added to 0 stays the same. So the linear equation for the line of fit is y equal 270x. Now we need to interpret the slope and the y-intercept in the content of the problem. We have the graph, and the equation is y equal 270x. The slope is 270. What does that mean in the content of the problem? Since it's a positive slope, that means the number of attendants increased by 270 people per one year. It's a rate of change. And that's what, how we explain the rate of change. The y-intercept is the initial value at zero years. Watch how the line crosses the y-axis at zero. So zero people attended the game before the eight years. The equation of line of fit is used to predict future outcome. That's why we write the equation. Predict how many people will attend the game in year 12. I don't want to continue with my graph to get to year 12 and see how many people are attending, so I use the equation. Imagine if I'm asking you in 25 years. That would be too much on the graph to write. So use the equation. Since x represents the number of years, then substitute x with 12. So y equal 270 times 12. Watch how we put it in parentheses just in case we need to multiply simplify that then y equals 3240 people that's how many people will be attending in year 12. now in what year will 6000 people attend the game again we use the equation we don't need to use the graph because i don't have the time to continue going with the graph to reach 6000 people so use the equation since y represents the number of people attending substitute y with 6000 then 6,000 equal 270x. Now solve for x because it's the number of years. So divide both sides by 270. Now 6,000 divided by 270 is 22.2. 270 divided by 270 cancels each other, which gives you x. So it will take 22.2 years to have 6,000 people attending the game. That's why we write the linear equation to predict future outcomes. In conclusion for today's lesson, a line of best fit is the line that best describes the data on the scatter plot. So it has to represent as much as you can of the dots on the graph. So the line should have some dots above, under, and on the line. We talked about something called correlation coefficient, and the correlation coefficient shows how strong that relationship is. If it's close to the negative one, that's a strong negative linear relationship. And if it is closer to the positive one, that's a strong positive linear relationship. But if it's equal to zero, that means there is no relationship. We also were able to write linear equations in slope intercept form for that line to represent the situation. We also use the equation to predict future outcome. That's it for today's lesson. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking, and commenting on my video. You guys have a great day. See you next time.